Okay, so uh, it's Monday, George Washington's birthday, and uh, it was clear this morning uh, up until about maybe 10 or 11. Well, it must have been about 11. About 11 it started raining, and it's probably probably about 3.30 right now, and it's been raining pretty good. Uh, pretty much since then and it's all there's no there's no actual no visible clouds it's all overcast and so this reminds me I was uh, on the internet and I was looking at uh, <laughs> Uh, some weather modification videos and there are there are basically these large um, humidifiers they're industrial size humidifiers and what they do is they send uh, mists of air uh, mists of water up into the air so they're they're sort of like large fans, large evaporator fans, basically, that uh, push they push moisture up in the air, and I believe that it's likely that there there is a microwave or radar uh, device that pushes the air up into the air. Uh, once it's lifted by these fans, it's pushed up into the air, and then uh, the HARP technology, the whatever geoengineering weather modification technology, can basically push the uh, moisture that they've uh, developed, and then push it up and then push it around wherever they want to in the air. Where, wherever they want to push it in the globe as far as I understand basically yeah they basically create misters they're industrial sized misters that push air up into the air and then microwave heaters push it further up into the atmosphere and then uh, other uh, harp type technology pushes it around the globe so and we've definitely got our share of the rain. I know the a lot of the uh, the people who have been watching the weather and the uh, the geoengineering weather modification have screamed basically uh, California engineered drought for the last whatever four or five years, and so now they're probably pushing it the other way so they don't so uh, basically. Uh, they're going to prove the the people who are talking about geoengineering wrong. So imagine this, if you can, a heater underneath this water puddle, a large heater, or a microwave pointed at this water and a large fan pushing up so as this water is warmed the fan will push it up and ideally what you'd want to do is be spraying this water and sort of an atomizer and the fan would pull it up, pull it up. And then you could point another microwave at the vapors going up and push it even further up in the atmosphere. And so that's one of the ways to create rain. Basically, it's atomizing water. Okay, something like this. Can you imagine a mister pointed up with heated air, fine particles, and then steered about with other 
like a microwave energy beam steered up into the jet stream. Can you imagine that? It could happen. And here is their larger version. Now, can you imagine heating that air with a microwave or some other heater to push it up into the atmosphere? And then once it's up in the atmosphere, shoot microwave beams at it to steer it anywhere you want. Think about it. Heating it up and then heating it uh, heating the fine particulates of the air up into the upper atmosphere to produce uh, these rain clouds. Up in the air, we get a bird's eye view of Butch's delicate dance. He's just working the very edge of it. And then Butch finds the cloud sweet spot. Okay, he's fixing a light of flare. Okay. Oh, I see the flare. Yeah. It looks like he's uh, painting the sky. The flares are shooting millions of silver iodide and calcium chloride particles into the cloud, where they collide with drops of water and ice and produce even more moisture. Then, usually within 20 minutes... So what is this white, smoky stuff over here? That's rain. Oh, that's rain? Yeah, that's rain. <laughs> All this rain out there. It's turn it to turn it adds to a growing body of evidence that cloud sitting works. It can double the amount of moisture in a given cloud, and the Texas programs boast a 12% increase in annual rainfall, thanks to seeding. And long-term study... And then you could have another microwave uh, pointed up at the cloud and heat it. Uh, for instance, heat it over here on this side and it would migrate to this side away from it because you're creating a, a higher pressure area I believe and basically by heating and cooling the atmosphere the moisture in the atmosphere you can push or pull the cloud wherever you want it and we have had some moisture but if you look up above here these are moisture clouds here. If you look up above here, this is sprayed material, jet sprayed material normally. I don't know of any vaporizers up here that actually take water from the ground and push it up. I don't know of any. I do uh, know there are some that do that, uh, probably in the Midwest. But if you see the straight lininess, the kind of foggy, hazy stuff in between the billowy clouds. This is the spray materials on top of the moisture, uh, the natural moisture that's come into the cloud. Now this, the sprayed materials are basically designed to uh, control the lower atmosphere moisture. And here is the San Jose flood. So just imagine creating floods and creating droughts. The technology is 20 or 30 years ahead of what they want the public to know. And so that's sort of geoengineering in a nutshell. And just something to think about. Where the rain is coming from.